Hello, my friends. I am here in Sudbury, Massachusetts with, with Methods Machine Tools, who many of us already know, but we're going to talk in detail with my friend Bill about these robo drills, the operations they're doing today, and how they might be able to benefit you as well. So, Bill, let's talk about this first machine to your right. What's it doing, and what are some of its capabilities? Well, this is a robo drill uh, with a DDR on it. So we can do all, all sides of the machine, uh, of the part in one operation. Actually, this one's two operations. We go from one vice to the other vice, but it machines all sides. So we can get five of the sides on one, and then we flip it to get the back side of the other. So that's, that's one thing. And now we have, during this uh, demo, we have dynamic milling going on, which is a cooling factor for the chips that we create so we don't create hot chips and wear out the tool quicker. You'll see that we use uh, dry cutting on several of the tools, um, which is fine for this application. Uh, we also have a ball and mill that does a very slight step over to create a, a really nice finish in a pocket. And that's about it for that demo. So many of us already know how great the robo drill is for speed. We know it has quick tool changes. We know it has quick feed rates. Yeah. But you're also cutting steel today. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So in cutting steel and transitioning mm -hmm. out of aluminum and steel, what's the cycle time comparison with a BT30 spindle like you have in the robo drill? Well, uh, they're both pretty close. I'd say the aluminum is just a bit faster because it's, a, it's an easier material to cut. But with the dynamic milling we're doing with the steel, it's, it's pretty close. So Bill, let's discuss a little bit more about this part that you're machining. We talked about it being steel versus aluminum on a robo drill, but can you show us some of the places that might be more difficult and, and some of the strategies that you might have for programming a steel part on a robo drill? Okay, yo, so we start with uh, a face mill, dry cutting, no coolant, no air. It's cutting 100 thou deep, and it's about 60% of the cutter width, and it, it mills off 100 thou to rough it. And then it comes in with the end mills using dynamic, again, dry, no air, dynamic milling to do the outside and the step on the outside. All dynamic milling, so it's, it's cooling the chips as it, as it cuts, and it does it at a, a high rate of speed. That being said, so, and then it'll finish with just a, a small cut to get the good finish that you want. <clears throat> then we got a 40 millimeter drill through the coolant, plunges it one, you know, one cut, G81, boom. And then we have another drill for this tap hole, very large tap hole, M20. Through the spindle coolant drill for that one. <clears throat> this over here, we're using a feed mill, hogging out all that material and the, the two ovals at the bottom, as you can see. Uh, just hogging it out. And then this one here, we, we hog out the, the material and then we use that ball end mill for the, the finish you see here. It's a small step over to get the, the best finish you can get. And for that side, that's about it. And then we flip it to the other vise. We face, we face it, we chamfer it, and we uh, inscribe it with method machine, Fenuk roller drill, material 4140 steel, and method machining. That's fantastic. And you're not using any coolant for this because it's steel, right? Well, we're, we're using no coolant on certain tools, other coo coolant on other tools. Like the through coolant drill that you spoke about. Right. And the finish passes with the end mills, we use coolant to get a better finish. That makes perfect sense. And what uh, drills and end mills are you using for this? We're using the Harvey uh, end mills. And actually, it's a face mill uh, made by Big Plus. So it's dual contact and it can handle the 100 thou. So rigidity is significant when getting into the harder materials. Yep. And a lot of times 
you'll see chatter if the rigidity is not there. But I'm looking at your workpiece. I don't see any chatter. It has a beautiful finish. Yes, uh, correct. So we're using a lot of uh, dual contact uh, tool holders that, you know, you also get the against the flange as well as the taper. So it's very rigid, very rigid. A little more expensive for the tool holder, but well worth its money. Uh, and if you're going to be in the world of switching back and forth from aluminum to the harder materials to the softer materials, yeah. it's worth investing a little bit more money in that upgrade, right? Absolutely, and it works well on the aluminum as well without no, any chatter at all. Well, if I have enough power for steel, I have enough power for aluminum. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing over on this machine? I see we have a automation setup. We got a nice robot, Fanuc robot in there, and it looks like it's actually running a demo right now. It is. Uh, we call this the circle square diamond. Uh, so we cut the circle and then the square, the diamond back to circle. It's not about what it can do as far as removing material, it's about the accuracy of the machine. So it's all about from the circle to the square, and then from the square to the diamond, and then the diamond back to the circle. And that, how accurate it is, we, we put it through the CMM, we can give you that information as well, but I don't have it with me right now. So if someone is, is curious about the specifics of that accuracy, they're welcome to touch base with you guys and figure that out. Absolutely. But the machines themselves are extremely accurate, correct? Yes. So tell me a little bit about the automation we have here, Bill. Um, I am learning every day something new about how adaptive automation is becoming. If I have the machine that's on your right, I yeah. can easily adapt this setup. And then once I have this setup, I can change this setup into an, an upgraded or updated system for automation, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's all about picking it up, putting it in. Uh, so if we were to do it on this machine, it could load the part into the first vise, wait for it to finish, then go in and flip it over. It'll come out, it'll pick the part up, come out to the cage. There'll be a flip station. It'll flip it over. It'll put it in the second vise and clamp it. Come out, and it'll do the second half of the program. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful setup. and. Current conditions, current manufacturing conditions have really led toward a more automated situation. Are you seeing more automation go out the door right now? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's definitely uh, something that companies want. They want lights out manufacturing. They can go through breaks uh, overnight if they want. You know, and uh, worst that will happen, it'll alarm out and you won't get all your parts for overnight because nobody's there to, to watch it after it. But Nine times out of 10, it's gonna run all night for you. And if I have this machine, and at the moment I have no automation on it, and I want to add something like this, yeah. but I'm a little bit nervous about proofing it out or understanding the programming behind it, do you support every step along the way for proving out a program and implementing a new situation for a customer? Absolutely, we could, we could uh, we, what we call a turnkey. We'll, we'll take their program if they want, and we'll implement a robot system, load, unload, using their own program. It sounds like fantastic customer service, and that support really brings the confidence level up of your customer, I would imagine. Oh yes, absolutely. And so, a situation like what we're seeing here, where we automate, I don't know the exact number, maybe you don't either, but the return on investment of doing something like this has got to be so substantially quick. Yeah, we've seen a 60% 60, 60 uh, increase in production, at least, sometimes even more. Well, if I can increase something 60%, I already know my return on investment is going to be like that. Yeah. And, and now we can do more or less lights out machining if we have the job capacity to do something like that. Absolutely, a robot doesn't get tired. <laughs> and what, that's true, and, and they don't take uh, breaks along yeah, the way. Absolutely. Um, it's a very valuable point. It's kind of in jest, but it's so very true as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a discussion that robotics will help simplify our lives once we learn how to really understand how they work. Absolutely. So what type of work holding are you utilizing for these setups right now? Well, this one we have the HWR vices, uh, which are vices that are uh, ma manual. These are manual for now. They 
Probably could probably could get hydraulics as well, but you just clamp down and it has teeth on the jaws to hold the part secure. And that's about it. And then it, you know, it's, it's a quick mount system. So it has uh, these grommets that go into four holes and then you just turn a, a bolt half a turn and it's holding it's holding in. So you just drop it in and you're there. Well, HWR is a fantastic vice. A yeah. Great, great job utilizing them. Do you have a specific coolant that you like to use for your tooling? Uh, we use it uh, MB50 Castrol, uh, which is basically it's it's pretty uh, harmless. It's more of a vegetable oil, so it's pretty uh, harmless to you as, as far as a skin irritant or anything like that. And another question I have for you, because I've been into shops where there is just smog everywhere in the machine shop, but I see you have the mist busters on top. Do they come standard? And also, it seems that they're doing an excellent job of removing the mist from the air. Oh, absolutely. They, uh, they work very well, and they are an option. As, uh, you have to pay for those. Ah, beautiful. Well, Bill, you have done a fantastic job answering these questions. Your wisdom helps me learn a bit more about these machines. It's awesome to know that on a BT-30 machine where I know that the speed is there, that the size of the machine's footprint is there, that I can cut steel in a rigid way that's almost apples to apples cycle time to the aluminum right before that. So thank you so much for sharing that with me, Bill. Guys, I hope you have learned something as well, and thank you for watching.